Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus, specifically the open air, open world elements of the game. A criticism that we've seen some, from some people over the last couple weeks and months is that some of the environments that we're gonna be exploring in Legends Arceus seem a little open, seem a little barren, seem to be lacking a lot of features for us to engage with. And in today's video, I want to discuss that topic and why I think that we have haven't really been shown all there is. I think there's a lot more here that we're going to be able to do, and we're being withheld a lot of it from the Pokemon company. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, it's a fair criticism for open world games to take a look at how much the world is filled. There's going to be a lot of running around and exploring different locations in this game, looking for Pokemon to complete your Pokedex, trying to find materials to craft Pokeballs, medicine, and other items that you might need on your journey. So you're going to want the world to be filled with a lot of interesting things to look at, to explore, and to try to figure out secrets and different hints towards. That's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of open world games have, and I'm aware upfront that Legends Arceus is not fully open world. But for the sake of this video and this discussion, I'm going to use the term open world just because it's a lot easier than making the distinction every time. So be advised as you're watching that I'm going to use that term even though I'm aware that it doesn't exactly fit. But with open world games as a whole, it's one of the things that they often struggle with, especially when you're making an open world game that focuses so much on nature and the natural world. One of the biggest ways to deal with the concern of a very undercrowded world is by putting in a lot of towns, civilizations, and NPCs to interact with. It's one of the ways that a lot of these games get away with having more spacious worlds to explore. But a game like Pokemon Legends Arceus is taking place in Hisui, a region where humans have not fully conquered. There's a couple settlements dotted around the landscape with people, but largely the areas that you're going to be exploring are devoid of human life. It is going to be the natural setting and it's going to be the Pokemon that exist in it. So how are they going to fill those spaces successfully so the experience is enjoyable for the player while also not feeling, you know, boring and malaise? And like once you've done an hour of it, you feel like, OK, well, there's really nothing else for me to do. It's going to be a big challenge for Game Freak, and I think they're trying to address it in a couple different ways that we've already seen from the trailers. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe at any time. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn on the notification bell so you never miss another upload. We've seen in the trailers that there's a couple things that are going to be dotted about the landscape of Hisui. First of all, obviously, are wild Pokemon of varying different difficulty levels. There's going to be the wild Pokemon that you can encounter and just throw a Pokeball at and capture. There's also going to be stronger Pokemon, alpha Pokemon, that you're going to have to battle. There's also nobles. Nobles are essentially the bosses. These are massive Pokemon. Cleavor is a good example of this. And you're going to have to actually have a physical fight with that Pokemon, throwing bags of what assumes is like food or uh, natural remedies for what the Pokemon is going through. And then once you get it down to a certain level, you're then going to be able to engage in a Pokemon battle. So the Pokemon are dotted about the natural landscape. But one of the other things that we've seen is natural resource collecting is going to be big. Crafting is going to be big. You're going to have to craft your Pokeballs, your medicine, your different items that you're using to get around the region. And one of the things that they revealed in the recent 13 minute overview trailer that the Pokemon company put out is that you're going to use your Pokemon, send them out of their Pokeballs and physically help you gather the materials. If you need to knock down berries, your Pokemon is going to help you. If you need to destroy a, a rock feature, uh, to get some of the ore, you're going to have your Pokemon assist you. If you need to travel from different locations in the region, your Pokemon, specifically Pokemon like the flying Pokemon or Pokemon that are going to have you traverse the ground like Weirdeer, these are Pokemon, your mounts, are going to be how you get around the region. So using your Pokemon to help you explore the natural environment is going to be paramount. So there's natural resources, there's wild Pokemon, and then there's boss battles. Completing the Pokedex is, of course, the big goal, and there's probably more story pieces about exploring the world as well. 
But there's also going to be side quests. One of the things that we saw from one of the more recent trailers is an overview of what a side quest will be, having to capture a Shinx and show it to a villager. That was just one of the more basic ones. You would have to assume that there's going to be bigger and more uh, involved ones than just that. But that's also going to take up a lot of your time. I would imagine that clearing these side quests is also gonna get you rewarded more materials, more natural resources, things that can then be put back into that crafting system. So we have two things right now, three things, side quests, Pokemon, and natural resource collection. And all of that works together. But what about other elements? What about what I mentioned before that most open world games include? Towns, people, civilizations. Well, we've seen the Jubilife Village. That's going to be your main hub. But one of the things that we've also seen on the map and in some other trailers is that there are other settlements. There are going to be other people dotted about the Hisui region. And interacting with those people is probably going to be some of the waypoints, the areas you have to get to in the game. Not only are you exploring specific regions of Hisui and trying to capture the Pokemon and learn about the Pokemon and the resources that exist in those areas, but we also see that there's clans of people dotted about the map, and one would assume that there's going to be settlements, towns, maybe individual buildings that are on the landscape for the player character to explore. One of the th things that I think is worth keeping in mind with this game is the fact that you can be damaged yourself. You can black out by getting attacked by a Pokemon. I see no reason to assume that they wouldn't extrapolate that to natural factors impacting your player's health. You could probably get hurt by the natural world just as much as you can get hurt by the Pokemon that live in that world. So I think that's going to be another element as well. One of the things that came out in what is now a debunked leak is a difficulty mode. We don't know if there's going to be a difficulty mode in Legends Arceus, but if I was a game developer, and I've said this for previous Pokemon games, I think a difficulty mode would really benefit this game. I can see a person wanting to just explore, collect materials, build a team casually in Legends Arceus, but I can also see someone who would want to play a Breath of the Wild-like master mode, where the Pokemon are more powerful, the resources are more scarce, or maybe it requires more to accomplish what you're trying to craft. I would love a mode like that to exist. Maybe it ups the natural weather challenges of the game, maybe different weather effects can impact the player stronger depending on the mode that you're playing in. All of these things I think can lead to a better open world. One of the other things is differentiation. We've seen the plains, we've seen a swampy area, we've seen snowy areas, we've even now seen some volcanic areas. They need to differentiate the different biomes and environments. If there's enough differentiation between these different areas, you can really just kind of naturally get rid of some of that boredom. I think they've intentionally only showed us the plains biome the most. This is one of the first areas right outside of Jubilife Village. It's one of the starter areas, quote unquote, that you're going to be exploring. I would bet Cleavor, the boss we've seen the most of, is probably an early noble Pokemon that you're going to be fighting if you do have to fight them in order, that is. I think they're showing this on purpose because they don't want to reveal a lot of the map. If you look on the map of the Hisui region that they revealed back over the summer, there's a lot of areas that you can clearly point out haven't really been shown yet. I think that's going to be an interesting piece to this game is how much we get, you know, not spoiled. We've only got about two and a half weeks until Legends Arceus comes out. There's not a lot of time for them to do massive reveals. Even in the big overview demos that we've seen in the last couple weeks, they've really, again, kept it to those planes biomes. And I don't think that's because that's all the game is. I think it's because they don't want to show us a lot. And that's exciting. I think that bodes well for the different areas that we're going to be able to explore. And listen, this is coming from the perspective of someone who is quite excited about what he's seen. I'm really, really enthused about everything we've gotten from this game, and I'm really looking forward to digging into it once the games come out. Now, of course, with that being said, I would like to know what you guys think. Are you worried that the game is going to be too spacious and boring, or do you think there's enough there for you to sink your teeth into already? that they've revealed officially. There might be stuff we don't know about. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments section below. And as I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on so you never miss another upload, and leave a like if you enjoyed today's discussion. I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>